I'm just leaving down here, okay? Okay. I'm gonna hit any trees, man. Alright. You with me? Yeah. Put your hand on me. You're okay. I no, got Put your hand on me. Okay. There you go. first sermon and he said that he had worked long and hard he was invited to speak or to preach at an evening service at a little country church in Oklahoma and he worked long and hard on that sermon wanted it his first time out to be a smash and then stood up in the pulpit and looked at a church that was empty except for one lone little man sitting down there so after the opening music he went down and he said my friend you seem to be the only member of the congregation who showed up and he said, I'm just a young preacher getting started. And he said, uh, what do you think? Should I? And the old boy said, well, I'm just a little old cop folk out here in Oklahoma. And he said, I don't know much about that sort of thing, but I do know this. If I loaded up a truckload of hay, took it out in the prairie, and only one cow showed up, I'd feed her. <laughs> <laughs> Bill took that as a cue, got back up and looked an hour and a half later. <laughs> went down and he said, well, my friend, like I told you, I'm a young preacher getting started, so what did you think? And he said, well, like I told you, I don't know much about that sort of thing, but I do know this. If I loaded up a truckload of hay, took it out in the prairie, the only cow, one cow showed up, I sure as hell wouldn't give her the whole load. <laughs> shape this government into an accountable and manageable servant of the people. And you are our voices in the great debate that we have begun. Thank you for getting across the clear and steady call for progress that we've sounded. Your help is essential in explaining to the press and the people of this country what it is we stand for and why. And I know it's not an always an easy job. Some of you have been traveling across the country sometimes at last minute notice <laughs> and just to spread the word others face challenging briefings and interviews day after day now I know it's not always an easy job and sometimes it gets a little rough out there I found out on the trail that nine times out of ten you don't get dessert and I'm a dessert man <laughs> the fellow starts introducing you just as the dessert arrives but as long as you keep faith in our cause, and as long as you hang tough, I'll hang tough with you. You don't have to worry about any surprises. The days of 
policy by polling were over when we took office. You don't have to wonder where we really stand or what we'll propose tomorrow. We've made it very clear. We believe in cutting taxes, cutting spending, cutting the size of this monstrous bureaucracy. We believe in giving our government and the economy back to the people where it's always belonged. We'll work with the Congress to achieve the bipartisan success that was our hallmark last year, but there are certain principles on which we will not yield. We were not sent here to raise the people's taxes. We will not abide any tampering with the tax cut that is waiting to go into effect. We will not sit idly by twiddling our thumbs as the Soviet Union continues its most massive buildup, military buildup in history. We will not balance the budget on the backs of Social Security recipients and working Americans or at the cost of our freedom. Don't be fooled by the sleight of hand proposals that to balance the budget that are being unveiled all over Washington these days. They're the same old tricks we've lived with and regretted for decades and proposed by the same people. They haven't been able to balance the budget but once in 20 years. They doubled our taxes between 1976 and 1981 and still had the biggest string of deficits in our history. Hearing some of these born-again budget balancers suddenly crying out against deficits is a little like hearing a mugger in Central Park complain about crime in the streets. <laughs> Even a better line on that is like hearing Casanova discuss virtue. <laughs> now, do any of you have any doubt where I stand? <laughs> I think a way to put it is that I stand with the American people on the side of less taxing, less spending, and less government. And if people ask you why, tell them because I believe in the American people. I believe in their ability to produce, to save, and to invest. And I believe we can work ourselves out of this recession if the government will just give the people a chance. Thank you for standing with us during this difficult year that's just passed. I still count on your help, your energy, and your staying power. We're moving, moving into an even more trying year, but our victories will have even more meaning for the American people. And I hope that you'll feel free anytime before you go out there to check and find out if there are any examples. I've always believed that specificity is the soul of credibility. And some sharp examples now and then can do a lot better than a whole couple of paragraphs of explaining. I remember once years ago when I was talking about, long before I ever thought I'd be in this business, when I was talking about the ridiculousness of some of the facets of the farm program. Now, you could have gone on about farm subsidies and crop limitations and all of that and told an awful lot. But I had a figure there that, if I remember it correctly, did it all in just one sentence. That the federal government had several programs that were telling poultry raisers how to increase egg production. And the same government had another program that was paying farmers not to raise eggs. So this is... There are so many examples of that kind, as a matter of fact, it just happened to happen <laughs> here. We have a program in the new budget. I've already begun to hear among some of the bleedings out there about in a time of recession and unemployment, what are we doing cutting the budget for job training? Well, I'll tell you what we're doing in cutting the budget for job training. This has to do with CETA. In 1980, CETA's budget was $3.2 billion, and only $592 million of that went for job training. The rest was all out there in the bureaucracy someplace. Well, our budget now for job training, and we're not going to call it CETA, is $1.8 billion, not 3.2, almost a cut in half. But out of that $1.8, 1 billion, $350 million will go directly to job training. That's so anytime you need any more of those goodies, well, just let us know <laughs> and we'll provide them for you. But again, having traveled that circuit 
with a pocket full of roll aids <laughs> um, through the years. Again, God bless you and thank you all for what you're doing in addition to your regular full-time work. Most grateful.